Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, apologies for not making a video from such a long time. Uh, as the reason being, I had some good news to share as well. Uh, two of my students who have been who I have been training have been selected on the national levels for the World Skills Competition to be held at Shanghai this year. So uh, I have been busy in those uh, trainings and uh, interactions, so was unable to make some videos. So back to some new videos. Uh, so this week uh, or this video will be looking at uh, frame generator and how we can create frame structures. Ideally, there are two different ways of creating frame structures. So method one and method two is what I'm naming it as. So let's have a look at how we can proceed them. So method one is I have a box here. All right, and I've just created a hundred by hundred by hundred uh, cube. And method two, what I have done is I've created a skeleton. Skeleton in the sense it's going to be a three D sketch. Same thing, hundred by hundred by hundred. All right, and uh, let's see how each of these methods work. So frame generator is basically found in the assembly environment uh, under the design tab. All right, so insert frame. So right now it's grayed out because there's no part here. So once we place a part, okay. So what I'll do is I'll start off with method one and I'll place that part that we created. I'll ground it at origin for now. And uh, let's get into the design tab. And once we click on insert frame, uh, it first asks us to save the entire assembly. So I'll save it as method one assembly, all right save it so once you do that all we can do here is we can select edges okay you can see here as soon as i place the mouse on one of the edges it also gives me a highlight of the view as well so if i even select it from a cross-sectional view and select the bottom view you can notice i get the frame so what is the frame member currently being used it's an iso standard square or rectangular tubes in this case it is square what is the size I have selected? 20 by 20 by 2. So right now it is centrally placed on the edge. So you see these points here. I can select any of these points and I can reorient the frame about where it has to be placed. So generally we all use the center uh, placement itself. So we can select that and you will notice there is a glyph of the structure as well, frame structure as well. So I'll select the top four uh, edges and then we can click on OK. So once you have done OK, it generates individual uh, member names. You can just go ahead and approve of all of those. Once you're done using this particular part, you can either suppress it or you can also hide the visibility as well. So right now let's switch on the shaded with edges view and let's have a look at what's happening. So uh, in an ideal scenario, this is not how our frame structure should uh, look like. Of course, we have to do a lot of end treatments and let's have a look at what sort of end treatment options are available. So one of the most common end treatment options are mitre, 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 however one can pronounce it. So all we have to do is select two frame members and then you will notice you get a 45 degree cut and it is mitered well. You also have the option of adding a gap between the two members that is for your welding uh, in this case you can keep it zero if your weld is going to be an external weld i'll just click on ok and you will see it will be automatically redesigned all right another form of end treatment that we can actually look at is something called as a notch now before we go into notch we have an option called as length or lengthen or shorten let's have a look at how this works very very simple uh, Apart from the edge that you've selected, if you want the frame member to be longer or shorter, you can use this particular command. So right now I'll go ahead with 50 mm additional length. So you can notice there is an intersection with this particular frame members, correct? The highlighted area, right? So what I'll do is we can use notch, select this member and select this member. So now you can notice how neatly it is being notched, correct? You can add, add a gap if you want to. In this case, I would prefer, I would want it uh, contacted. So I can just click on OK. And now we have a very neat looking treatment. As for the other corners, I would like to mitre them. Okay, 
and this as well just click on ok and it is done so even if you take out individual frame members you can isolate them and see how they look as well all right so undo isolate so let's look at the uh, frame member that we notched so you will actually see it's got a very neat looking notch correct so this you can go ahead send it for your laser cutting or uh, other manufacturing processes and try and achieve the part as well so this would be one of the ways that we can create the frame structures all right so uh, i'll go ahead and save this you can give it a new level of uh, details yes now as for the other method we'll have to again open up our assembly in this what we can actually do is we'll have to place the method two part that i've created and this particular part does not have any solid features at all it only has a frame skeleton which is in the form of a sketch okay very very simple again we can come down to design insert frame uh, it asks you to save so method to assembly and then start selecting your frame members so let's have a look at different frame members in this case what are the options that we have we have l angles we have channels i beams uh, other round bars round tubes square or rectangular tubes square uh, solid tubes as well t's z's all of these categories we have under that again we have different different standards say for example you want din standards so under din standards you will have different options as well whether you want hollow structures or tubes or solid structures you can choose how you want so i prefer the iso and here we again have sizes as well so let's take the smallest one in this case i'll take a square tube yeah the smallest size that we have is a 20 by 20 by 2 so 20 is the width 20 is the length and 2 is the thickness of the frame member okay so we can select this so just another feature that i would like to point out here is something called as an offset okay so we have a rotate offset a offset b you can choose any of these so you can see how it is being offset so since half of the distance is 10 so let's keep a 5 mm offset I'll keep this as say 2 mm offset so it's above the center point right so it's not exactly centered so these options are also available you want to rotate it by 45 degrees that is also available and your notches and your notches and the end treatments also will be will adjust automatically as well so you need not worry about that so you can come down set it to zero and it is done in this case I've just added only one yes and then again you can take insert frame you can select any other frames that you want and you can go ahead you can always change sizes using the option of change reuse reuse or change and then we have an insert end cap option as well if you want to close it up a little bit you can choose what sort of a corner you want profile sharp chamfered fillets here you can give sizes offset what material you want all of these options are also available so uh, this is what frame generator has for us so probably in the future videos i will probably talk about frame analysis uh, wherein we conduct studies analysis only for frame structures so uh, one of our viewers are actually requested for a geodesic frame structure right so i am in the process of working on that uh, let's see how that comes out uh, and we'll perform an analysis on that as well okay uh, for now, thank you for following. Uh, hope you learned something new. Uh, if you like this video, please share, hit the like button and subscribe as well. Thank you so much.